Fruitful Living with Cecil Anderson. Here on Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and we're talking about Catholic celebrities this morning and how seriously we should take them in general when it comes to our faith. But uh, welcome, welcome back, Cecil Anderson. Thank you so much. It's good to yeah. be back, Keith. How are you doing this morning? I am doing quite well, although like I'm already starting to, uh, you know, especially with uh, Debbie and Adam's challenge of just putting her smartphone down on the weekend. I'm, 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 I think I'm going to have a difficult time with that. I don't know. What about you? <laughs> yes, it is really, really hard. And I'm someone who is in a constant battle of trying to be on my phone less. Like my phone's literally in black and white and I get a lot of hate for it. Um, <laughs> but I can't really appreciate pictures that people send me. And I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm really trying not to be on my phone. <laughs> I'm like, support me in this, please. <laughs> uh, but I totally agree, which kind of leads into my topic today about Catholic celebrities and how much attention, how much, um, how much we put on Catholic Mm. celebrities um, and anything that they say or do. I got to make a distinction, though. There's Catholic celebrities and celebrities that are Catholic. Do you know Mm. where I'm going with with this? I think so, yeah. So Catholic celebrities would be the people that you hear probably on Catholic radio regularly. There are like, you know, Father Mike Schmidt, you know, Mm -hmm. any of those Catholics who are Catholic. And the reason why they're a celebrity is because they're Catholic and what they're doing in the Catholic church. Like that is why they are at a certain level probably a lot of people outside of the Catholic circles wouldn't know that they are, you know, celebrities, right? Um, right. And then there's celebrities who are Catholic, people who are famous for, you know, being actors in, the, in sports, in like anything in like that realm. Um, and they just, and they also happen to be Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, so those, that's my distinction. <laughs> and I'm going to talk kind of about both today, but I think a little bit more specifically, maybe um, about celebrities. Well, actually, you know, it really does cover both about mm-hmm. how much weight do we give everything that they say or do so i mean you've probably experienced this before keith um a catholic celebrity or celebrities catholic has come and said uh something come out and said something done something and everyone goes crazy on two extremes we go crazy we go crazy it's either oh my goodness this celebrity can do no wrong this is amazing Mm -hmm. oh my gosh i'm so glad we have a voice out here saying these things that's awesome or it's like they should not even be speaking for the church, like on behalf of the church. We should not even be like giving them a platform. Mm. It, it, it is crazy the extremes that happen anytime that a celebrity is like, you know, says something about the Catholic faith. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and, it, you know, it's funny because we were talking um, on the next right thing. Debbie mm. and Adam were talking about that communication and being on your phone and stuff like that. And I'm like, we are very over communicated too these days in our culture because we have this like news cycle and uh and on social media and we're constantly like hearing they said that what they did what and it's like uh, we have always have something to be get riled up about um and i don't think that's super healthy i don't think it's really healthy for also for us to expect like everyone to you know be reading all these things and formulate an opinion on all of yeah. these things all the time. I mean, Keith, you literally are working in the news. <laughs> like you you kind of have to follow these things. But do you find that it's like helpful or unhelpful to constantly be on top of all of this stuff in your for your own like spiritual life? Yeah, I don't think us humans were meant to take in so this much amount of information in such a short amount of time so quickly. Um, especially when it comes to like Twitter, like everybody's ha- like the the whole gist of Twitter or X is like you putting your opinion out there. And so for those that are really into like, well, I want to get all these followers. I want all this attention. You have to like put in like your hot take. Like this is my hot take. I got to put in my two cents. (laughs) Exactly. It's like you don't No, You don't need to. And so it's like there's a like for at least me, there's like a constant battle of like, do I really need to throw this? Like, is it really? Uh, productive to maybe do like a rebuttal to this, this comment it's not it never is <laughs> like mm, yeah because you you're right like there's going to be people that will will be on your side and then there's people that are going to be on another side and it's just this constant battle whereas if you had a conversation in person people mm-hmm. will be less um i guess guarded if you will and they'll be more open to a conversation or dialogue 
That actually brings up a really good point, too, is that with this overcommunication where we can basically find out how all of our friends feel on a subject at any given time is really divisive, actually. Because, again, if you're just sending out a you know tweet that's only so many characters, I don't even know because I don't um, I don't really love Twitter in general or, or X, whatever it is called now. Um I you can suddenly say like oh I see this friend is in this category and this friend's in that category and I'm not talking about by the way like just there's obviously clear ch- church teaching right? right I'm not talking about like saying okay I'm pro life or you know I'm, or I'm pro abortion right there that's like those are very clear things um, uh, but when it comes to sometimes more nuanced things or even how we approach those subjects and how something is said like there's people in the pro-life movement and there are people in the Catholic world that I really love the way they present the faith. Mm -hmm. And there's some ways I don't love the way that they, like, I don't love it. I may agree with what they're saying, but I don't love the way it's presented. Right. Um, But when we have this like over communication, we can just be like, Oh yeah, this friend's in this category, this friend's in that category. And you're just kind of like, wow. Okay. I've just kind of divided everybody, (laughs) but we also forget so much how um, each of us have such a unique personality and unique experiences. And that really plays into how we do talk about these things. And we like, we have no room for nuance sometimes. And it's really, really sad. We are not good at taking what we like from what someone has said and leaving the rest if we don't like it. Like we have to kind of connect everything that everyone says to their whole person. And that is really, really damaging because it ruins a lot of relationships and it makes it, I remember sometimes I brought up like, okay, one Catholic blogger or something. And I was like, oh yeah, I I was reading this book by this person and I really liked it. And someone's like, oh, you know what they said about blah, blah, blah though? Like, and I'm like, "I, I don't care. They wrote a book about this that I thought was really good. They had good insight. Like, okay, maybe they said something about this subject that you didn't like, or maybe wasn't as great. But like, we're expecting people to be perfect all the time and say everything exactly along like perfectly aligned with church teaching in a way that we would appreciate it the most i mean come on people (laughs) like we can't and i do this too by the way i'm not when i say people i'm saying sissel (laughs) Um, like you know we can't yeah no i was gonna say like I've, i've been guilty of that too but go ahead yeah yeah it's it's just it's really yeah it's we're not good at um just you know taking things little by little we have to make it very much like you're in this category um and if you say that then you're no longer on my good list right mm-hmm. <laughs> and imagine remember if either each of us had the same platform that some of these catholic celebrities had we would say something at some point in time that a lot of people probably wouldn't agree with or maybe you even realize looking back on wasn't the best thing to say i mean Keith, you're talking to a microphone. You're talking to a bunch of Catholics all across America right now. Um, I've done it for a while, too, and I guarantee I've said something that was a little bit off before. I guarantee it. (laughs) Especially before 7 (laughs) a.m. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I feel the same way. If I don't have a coffee in hand before I go on air, at least... Something's gonna slip. Uh, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> so, so kind of going back to like celeb, like celebrities first, Catholics second. Wh- what should we think about them? Like, should we, you know, because like they have this huge platform, and now they mm. have this like brand new faith that they're really on fire about, but maybe they're not well catechized. Right. Yeah, that's like a whole other like little genre of <laughs> the Catholic celebrity, right? The ones who have those very public conversions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I personally, um, I think we need to be careful, especially us like in media outlets and stuff like that, about how much, um, not just attention, but how much we're going, oh my goodness, we have to get their story. We have to find out everything about their conversion. We have to remember that conversion happens daily for all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, getting someone's immediate like, the early days of conversion are rough okay like i would not if the first few months i was catholic i even even became um part of the guadalupe radio network only about a year and a half after becoming catholic and i was stressed every time i talked on the radio because i was so stressed i would say something that was not in line with church teaching because i didn't know you know because i was still learning a lot so i really think we have to be careful about how much pressure we're putting on this person to like make the documentary about their conversion, you know, get them to speak in front of everyone. You know, some apps will kind of get them to be like, lead this meditation. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's calm down. Let them have the conversion. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's not maybe throw them into the fire this way. And also immediately go, everything that they say is going to be accurate and right. And that's okay. We're, we're working on it. Right. Mm. Um, also, of course, you know, we need to make sure that, um, you know, if they do say something is particularly really off, like church teaching early on and stuff like that, give them that grace. Really, yeah. all we need to be doing is praying for them. 
that yeah. is like the number one thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Russell. Uh, I forgot his last name. You know the Russell Brand is that yeah right? Russell Brand, where he was you know sharing all these different Catholic things, like very these much so Catholic things, like oh pray the rosary, and then like he said something, and they were like, eh. and then you had a bunch of people in the comments <laughs> section like, what are you doing? This is wrong. It's like yeah, there's a time and a place to to yeah to, to do that <laughs> like you're gonna turn him off to the whole the whole idea of this uh so stop stop trying to like carpet right. bomb him with all these negative comments we should be praying yeah. for him like you said yeah. or we or we get a hint that someone is going towards like christian faith and, like they say god bless you when someone sneezes and everyone's like oh my gosh they're catholic like <laughs> you know and, and it's like we kind of like put that intense pressure on them it's like okay let them pray for them let them get to the place that they need to be uh because i've definitely seen it before where like very especially people who are very there's like a guy ollie london i don't know if you've ever heard of him mm -hmm. but he very much lived a lifestyle outside of church and then and he was very controversial too and it would have been um in a lot of different ways um and he he started going towards the faith i don't know where he is right now but mm -hmm. all these articles like we're talking about like he went night and day in a couple weeks yeah and I'm very hesitant to be all like, oh, my gosh, it's a miracle. He's And I'm like not saying that those conversions can't happen like that, but I'm like, let's not jump the boat on this right now and let him, you know, again, have that space. So as like a summary, um, it is OK if when some celebrity comes out and says or does something um, that you do not a know about it. Or formulate a huge opinion on it in a few minutes you know like you do not have to have that opinion if you're living your daily vocation your daily vocation is already the most important thing and it takes a lot of effort as a parent as a single person as a you know as a, a priest it's okay if you do not formulate an opinion on it or you kind of are just too busy living the vocational life to actually pay any mind to it yeah no, well well put um yeah i definitely think we should leave some of these converts alone for uh you know whatever how long it takes and let them learn to be catholic without nitpicking their lives very important thank you so much sissel for for bringing this to our attention really appreciate it every single wednesday on fruitful living but we can also catch you your producer on back to the father every friday afternoon on our youtube grn online also the host of young and president dallas so we're really excited to hear that on friday but this is the end of the first hour that's it. But we have so much more coming up on the second hour. So if you aren't able to catch the remaining part of Morning Joy where truth matters, it's okay. We've got you covered. You need to go to our YouTube page or even our Rumble page to catch the entirety of the particular show that we're talking about, Morning Joy, or A Life Lived Joyfully, or Back to the Father, like we just mentioned. But if this is us parting ways, hey, God bless, and make it a joyful day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. And we'll see you after this break. This has been Morning Joy, where truth matters. Hosted by Keith Downey. Take some joy with you today. Visit grnonline.com slash joy to listen again. Share a segment or answer the question of the day. That's grnonline.com slash joy.